to save me the time of uh, lots of explanatory notes and that I use in my videos to try to explain where I'm coming from in the futile hope that more than one or two people will understand what I'm saying. I'm going to abbreviate that by just saying I have 5 million IQ. But if you're scratching your head, you don't understand something. Let's just say that I have 5 million IQ, right? And you have 4,999,999. So I've just edged you out by like one little IQ point. That's the only thing. And you just have to have a little humility and just admit that I'm right and everything will be fine. <laughs> Or you could stand your ground and maybe even improve your brain function that much more. Either way, you win, okay? And I'm happy to cede any and all territory. But I was studying the Zodiac this morning, and I think a lot of the Zodiac really is about teaching us about how life continues on. I think a lot of the Zodiac is about how life continues. I've got, actually, Orion uh, right in front of me right now, so I, I often consult my Zodiac before starting a video because I just, I like to just tune my mind to it a little bit. You know, find something that uh, takes my interest. You know, you're making meaning. The mind is growing just looking at it. I, I really recommend people downloading Skyview. I've been fucking around with it for like a couple of years <laughs> and it literally I mean I use it like a baby would use a rattle that's pretty much the level of function that I have using a zodiac uh, or a star chart and uh, not the same thing I know but uh, but you know if those of you out there I know I've got some viewers that are pretty pretty intelligent people <laughs> in fact the word level of intelligence probably doesn't apply in, in this regard I mean I if you've watched any of my videos you know that they're just inarguable benefits to knowing your own voice even if it's your own bullshit right? but I don't go around blurting my bullshit out to people I spend most of my time listening to other people's bullshit and now and then I'll float a little bit of my bullshit and everyone has a good laugh and that's, if that's all I ever accomplish I'm happy hey look look at that guy that BS over there boy he's put a lot of effort into his BS you know that stinks a little less foul than most people's bullshit and maybe just maybe if you followed any of my videos, that might mean that I've achieved something. That's all. And you know what? That says things about me. That says things about the world. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of uh, pride and humiliation to spread around all of us. You know, and consider it fertilizer. But yeah, I definitely think that the zodiac is about just exploring different stages of growth and continuing life. I was out in the water today and I was just doing some stretching and, and thinking about two fields of stimulus that my body is responding to and probably between the age of 16 and 30 were the best years of my life, not because they weren't harrowing, but because anything that happens in that time in some sense is physically the best years of your life because there's an enormous amount of power of growth of many different levels happening during that period. We don't think of it as growth most of the millions of hours of the time because the world just makes it fucking harder than it needs to be. And we all know that, and it's, you know, what the fuck are you going to do? It's either an infinite problem or it's no problem at all because, you know, hey, you fucking dealt with it, whatever, right? Only pussies think about that anymore. But men, women are pushed over the edge all of the time. And, uh, so for instance, I meet, like, say, a very attractive woman, very sexual woman. Uh, it's attractive, but I'm not attracted to that because it takes too much aggression to build the body to the martial level. And a nice athletic level is, is fine, but you don't, especially in my age category, middle age, you don't have to be, like, taut, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I want a relaxed person who's got a little fat on their body. You just don't need to be a fucking soldier, right? Olympians fucking train to the level that people are, are trying to appear like. And it's a fashion. It's just a fashion. That's all. And maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but it's not necessarily everything people think it is. Think about just about how you feel about putting on fat, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. How would you feel if you woke up with an extra 20 pounds tomorrow, somewhere on your body, and not in your dick, and not in your tits, <laughs> not even in your ass, you know? 
but I was thinking about, you know, my physiological response because actually, well, this period, which programmed a lot of my physiological response to the world or my father or the father or my mother or the mother. And whether you're a sort of a pagan person or not, I think there is a mother and the mother and a father and the father. If what we're talking about is the whole mind, one's whole mind. So this is how I... I'm abbreviating a lot of the kind of extra details that I would throw in because I'm 5 million IQ. And my physiological response and built in a time that, while arguably the best time of my life was also the worst time of my life, right? Just like a Dickens story. And for me, that's my physiological response. It doesn't matter if it's accurate with anyone or everyone is one of trepidation toward the mind of the world. If you told me the world had just snuck up behind me, it would strike fear into my heart. That's my experience of the other, of the world. And I've never been accepted by a healthy male or female herd, ever, in my entire life. And it's not something I like to talk about, but it's another one of those things, you know? Like a, it's just a thing. And there's certain things for me that I, I've never been able to develop because I've never been accepted by a male or a female herd, at least not since grade seven. When I was highly accepted, then it went down rapidly. Not unexpectedly, I'm sure there are a lot of people listening to this who didn't take to the school system and rapidly descended the social strata. You notice how, like, when kids are very young and they're not too indoctrinated because the indoctrination has gone up, like everything else, but it used to be, let's say, when I was born in the 1970s, that up until, you know, five and six and seven, kids were, like, really super accepting. They're not indoctrinated. They were always healthy. You never saw, like, a super fat kid. I had a couple fat friends when I was a kid, but one of them was actually probably just unhealthy because they didn't exercise very much and the other was extremely athletic and it was like fuck he carried it well and he was part native too or part uh, Métis which I think is native basically you know and kids just accept everyone and they have fun and they get along and it's not that, that it's bad that we lose that function but I think there are a lot of things that are lost that shouldn't be so even though I haven't been accepted into a female or male herd or a healthy female or male herd my entire life, just sociopaths kind of taken me in kind of thing from time to time. Um, you know, I wonder how many people actually are if you just if they just turn to their, you know, uh, sorority or fraternity sister or brother and just said, you know what, enough with this bullshit. You, you, and you are a cunt. <laughs> I wonder how many people need to do that. If there's anyone in your life that you would like to call a cunt or an asshole and you can't, that's that's an unhealthy relationship. Now, I've been in plenty of them. I'm not saying you should go and tell them those people they're a cunt or an asshole. I'm just saying that's the situation. It doesn't make you a bad person. It's just how accepting can it be if you think someone's a cunt when they're not around? You know, or they just did some cunty thing that they just like you just can't fucking forget how cunty it was and you've just never been able to really trust them since then. How many fucking cases are there have spread out amongst all the social networks of the world? We see it on TV all the time. Not that it's an accurate representation, but and yet something about the most inaccurate TV shows is kind of a hyper accuracy. I'm not saying hyper-reality. Reality is a bad word in my language, but a hyper-accuracy in the, the open malice between different people in groups. And, better than that, the unintended malice between people. Oh, did you need that heart in your chest? I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. Don't overreact. You know, there are a lot of reflexes. There's a lot of training of the mind that is not, its effect is not in proportion to its responsibility, sort of like a member of the military. It's kind of like a Tourette syndrome, right? There's a lot of extra aggression that doesn't need to be there. There's a lots of extra distrust that doesn't need to be there. And there's and lots of extra anxiety 
It doesn't need to be there. It needs to be learned from, but it, it, it's too bad it has to remain trapped in, in the fabric of our relationships. And that's where pain goes. It doesn't just go in our body. It stays in vacuoles in and around our lives, just like the garbage dunks and the uranium deposits. Right? And you can go... I've walked certain places on certain days, and certain areas are kind of crappy. Or sometimes it needs to rain, and you get, you know, I go many places, and those places change under the influence of many different conditions, not the least being the time of year. And I noticed that uh, Cancer was born, the astrological sign of Cancer was born on the summer solstice, and I find that very significant. Aries actually starts on the spring equinox, and Pisces finishes right on the eve of the equinox. Just something new. Thank <laughs> you.